What is going on everyone? My name's Boyt and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the left side of the map in the blue color playing as Poseidon. His name is Akimo. His opponent today in the red color playing also as Poseidon. His name is Squash. The map is Marsh and this game was requested to me by two people. Uh, Sir Lundberg, uh, the 79th, also known as likes to play Ra, thinks Norse is overpowered, and uh, is a Tekken player now. And also by Santos, a Poseidon aficionado, uh, also known as Matrius's cousin. Um, so, or brother, or um, um, something, something or other. He's, he's a... Uh, he likes his Poseidon, so we've got a Poseidon mirror for him now. Poseidon mirrors are very, very interesting because, well, not really interesting. Actually, I'll take it all back. It depends on the map. So there's there's a couple of situations where Poseidon can be really, really dry, and that's in the situations where you can force a safe second town center. Um, so the, the situation is, if you've got a map like Marsh, what you can do is you can hold onto Lua until about four minutes into the game and then and then you scout your second town center and this town center is beautiful here for um for squash right but you can put your lure down on this town center and then bring in you've already got 600 food on the town center bring in another 750 food on this town center and role play a little bit like set but you just get like a safe second town center you get the food on that town center so it's really nice and juicy and fantastic um and, the, and then it's kind of like a very, very consistent thing. And if both the Poseidon players move into that style, you can get a really boomy game and a really late game orientated game. And sometimes you can get some really exciting games, but they're very, um, uh, they're very slow to get going. But both players have cast their lure straight away. Both players are not going for that strategy. Uh, and, and oftentimes that these fast lure strategies also are simply just really fast classical strategies. So we see Squash, he's got two villagers on wood, two villagers on gold. This indicates either a four minute, a 4.15 or a 4.30 advanced time. I mean, 4.02, 4.16, whatever you want to call it. Um, but that's what this indicates to me. So we're probably going to be seeing a really fast advanced time here. Uh, and Kimo also casting the lure early, but it looks like he's leaving his ball here. He's not going to be grabbing those early, so... Uh, he can kind of do anything in this situation. This town center is really crummy. This town center is really crummy. So I wouldn't actually be surprised if Kimo goes for something a little bit different. We see three villages on wood, uh, two villages on gold, the temple coming up for Kimo. So uh, no surprises here, but Squash's temple is a lot faster than Kimo. So he's going to be getting going much, much quicker than Kimo at least into the classical age, and we'll see how that's going to go. We've also got the guy's Book of Knowledge over here, plus 300% bonus infantry damage to Titans. We've also got up at the top of the map, the Wedget Eye, which is a negative 10% myth unit food gold wood cost. Uh, and we have the Canopic Jar of M study. So kind of... Oh, no, there's one more relic. And Boots to kick everything. So unfortunately, no Loki in this game, so that relic is kind of underwhelming. But... Kind of underwhelming relics in general for this matchup here. The the faster infantry train time doesn't really do anything. Wedget, I kind of make Centaur viable here for the uh, Poseidon player. I believe this doesn't reduce the favor cost. That's the important one. So I think there's a... I could be wrong, correct me, but I think on extended edition, the Wedget I reduces favor cost. But that might be... I might be thinking about the negative... The, the temple reduction technology. I think I am thinking about the temple reduction technology. Anyways, um, if this relic were to reduce favor, then you could easily just start role-playing as Zeus because everything is cheaper, therefore you can afford it all and feel fantastic. Anyways, let's see how this goes. The villagers moving forward, going to grab this town center here. A bit of an interesting town center grab here for Squash. Um, there's not really anything on it, and it's kind of in the middle here of two uh, two big forests. So an interesting decision to grab this town center straight away. No real surprise that he has, but Kimo getting a little bit unlucky here with his uh, scouting. If we check out his line of sight, he probably just missed those villages going for this town center, and he's just looking for something to harass, but there's already a Theseus out for Squash. Maybe pushing Kimo's Theseus away. Both uh, 
uh, Theseus is a very close in stats. And as soon as Kima gets to that next age, it's going to be uh, fine here. As we see, the Theseus is going to be attacking each of these villages. Villages running away. We'll see what Kima's going to go. We're going for three stables here. This is pretty wild from from Kimo. Um, we'll see how it's going to go. It's a it's a pretty it's a pretty all in strategy. He needs to get some damage done with these stables because uh, this is indicating that he's going to stick in the classical age for the longest possible time. Here he's going to get all of these Hippocon. He's going to go huge aggression. Get try and get as many raids as he possibly can. Now Squash, on the other hand. He hasn't saved his lure. He's really not got that much food here that is possible to be eaten. So Kimo's going to be able to get a lot of value if he's scouted the map well. If we check this out, Kimo knows about this hunt. Kimo knows about this hunt. And Kimo knows about this hunt. So he knows about all of the important parts of Squash's base. So we'll see. Will these Hippocon get the damage done or not is the question here. But the, uh, the Hippocon are coming out now. And let's check out these upgrades. We've got the Hand Axe. We've got the Pickaxe. And this is an exact opposite of what I was talking about, about a slow start to the Poseidon game here. Um, Kimo dictating the uh, the aggressive uh, start here. And I think he's made a pretty wise decision based on the map. We'll see if he's going to get any real value from this. If we're going out, we do see Toxodes coming out in response for Squash. He's kind of trying to get those archers to counter the uh, cavalry. And you might say... Archers counting, countering cavalry, that's not a thing, and you would be correct, but there is a, a world where uh, a, an army comp of about one to two uh, Hippocon Toxodes at full population does beat a full pop um, Hippocon army just because the Toxodes get protected for, a, for long enough that they actually deal more damage than the Hippocon are doing. I could be wrong about that, but that's vaguely how I remember it. Plus, also, you can advance to the next ages faster. Uh, nice fight here for uh, Squash, at least at the start, before the the kind of meat shields do start dying. He's going to be chasing those Toxodes back, but nice retreat here from Squash to get away from Chemo's Hippocon here. We'll see where he's going to go with these. And now, the other thing that Chemo can do here, which is a, a little bit not talked about in the one town center versus two town center fights here, is you can go for a semi fast mythic here. You get the damage done with the Hippocon to slow down your opponent. You hit the mythic age, big earthquake, chimera spam, and your opponent's stuck in the classical age trying to deal with those mythic age myth units. So, we'll see if that's what Chemo is going to be going. Uh, for here in order to, to finish this this game off and, and find himself an advantage here. But like Squash is getting some gigantic value out of these Toxodes so far. Uh, and Chemo Sipicon really haven't found any villager kits just yet. We are getting some Hippocon coming out now for Squash. He's actually starting to farm, not feeling comfortable getting these Hippopotamus here, though. They are very, very, very juicy here. He could easily drag them in and start eating them close to this tower. So he could clearly get five villagers eating these hipp Hippopotamus and, and feel safe with that tower to garrison that one there. But not happening just yet. We're stealing these Hippocon race around the side of the map here, going after Squash's villagers here. We'll see if he can come in and hit them, because he does know they're there. This is a little trick you can do. You can see, oh, there's no ball here. And this only works on Vubli, and we can see that that's exactly what's happening. But Squash, the um, APM wizardry that he is, reactionary, he uh, does manage to pull back there instantly, only losing one villager there. Uh, good pick for Chemo, but Squash has got the two town center advantage, and he hasn't had a lot of idle town center this game. So he's very, very far in front on the village account here if we check out the uh, resources and the population and all that other good stuff we've got 40 villages for squash 32 for chemo so it's not as big of a difference as you might think chemo has got more population at this time but this does start to um really snowball as the villagers start coming out because it is one villager for every uh so it's two villagers for every one villager that comes out which is uh it tends to be quite big but we've got medium hippocom we've got squash's army kind of trapped here uh he's going to pull back nice usage of that uh line of sight there from the sentry tower able to spot the hippocom coming in and now chemo going to be attempting to get some more damage dealt oh we can get some nice micro here from those hippocom but he's just going to be retreating back away from squash for the time being we're starting to see a stable coming up here as squash going to be turning around oh not really turning around just losing a couple of units here this is a really nice uh, skirmish here for Chemo, getting a lot of little cheeky kills here, and that's going to be throwing away a lot of that economic advantage that Squash is going to be getting, and this is exactly what he needs to do. He needs to get a decent heroic time here, and also a decent Mythic Age timing. We see the uh, raid coming into Chemo's base 
Riot here as the villagers retreating back and going to attempt to garrison potentially into the town center. He does have a lot of those herdables that he can eat, but he's just going to come over here, eat this hippopotamus. He's got a couple of hippocon popping out here. The Ford hippocon looking for something to pick off there. He does manage to snipe one toxo there with Hippolyta, getting some nice clean snipes there with that hero archer. Now we're starting to see the farms are up. Let's check out those economic upgrades. No plow for squash just yet. Not having the gold to get that one just yet. So those uh, farms very, very slow. And I don't think I saw... Oh, he does have husbandry. So at least he's got... Uh, a little bit of a bonus there on those farms. Now, the Hippocon's coming. Going to be attempting to hit these villagers. Nice retreat micro here from Squash. But the line of sight just not as good. He's going to be losing another villager here. But still, that villager advantage is going heavily in the favor of Squash right now. However, Kimo's got map control and he is going for a second town center. This isn't what I would recommend here. I think just going straight to the Heroic Age and trying to get straight to the Mythic Age is the answer uh, in this situation. Because you've got all of the initiative here. Those Squash may be able to get to the Heroic no, he's not going to be able to get to the Royal Gage here uh, faster than Chemo would, but the second town center coming up, potentially third town center is the other option in order to attempt to, to catch back up. He's got all the map control, can prevent Squash from going three town centers, catch up on the villagers uh, and feel good about that, that decision making there, but we'll see how that's going to go here as Chemo's third town center is on the way. Now Squash going to be coming back in. Uh, I do see a comment about Earthquake not being that good versus Poseidon, but the idea isn't necessarily the Earthquake. It's that you get out those Chimera nice and early when there's only two heroes. So when you Earthquake, there's a couple of Chimera coming in that can one-hit all those Militia anyways. Um... So that, that's kind of the idea there. It's not just an earthquake. And you also get access to Polyphemus to come through and, and help out a ton as well. Um, and, and Heliopolis if, if, that's, if that's necessary. And you just get a lot of damage done, basically. Um, and that makes up for the lack of economy. And then you get your town centers. But Squash is now going to get to the Heroic Age first, which means he's going to get to the Mythic Age first. Generally, that's what it means. And Kimo's going to get his three town centers, possibly catch up on the village account, but be very behind on tech so he just needs to keep getting that pressure keep getting some villager kills he's not able to get anything over here we do see the armory coming up for squash right now and the hippocon chilling for squash just playing nice and defensive he realizes he does have a slight advantage economically here but it's not going to last he's gonna have to decide how can he continue here we do see the ketoscope Toskopos here on the third settlement for Squash. Going to be trying to deny that one later. So that's a really nice positioning there from Chemo. And Squash is going to know that that's kind of the case here. We don't see any crenellations from the watchtowers that, that Squash has got here. Um, and Chemo's just retreating away. He's cut production, starting to build farms, getting his armory up. And, and he's really not going to be that far behind Squash. Um, to the Mythic Age, but we'll see if it's going to matter. I, I probably I expect to see a Feistus from both these players uh, in this in this matchup. Though there is probably an argument that with really strong Chimeras here, you can push these gold mines, these gold mine, this gold mine, or potentially in the reverse over here, here and here. We're starting to see walls coming up, protecting the gold mine over here. We've got the Hippocon just waiting and making sure that they uh, are not going to get picked off on this location here. So that's some nice play here from Squash. Uh, and, and and the walls will just go up everywhere here uh, uh, as the gold income starts becoming uh, nice. And there's the Aphrodite coming through there for Chemo, and he's now equal on village account. Uh, the resource total probably slightly in favor of uh, Squash, but I think Chemo's done a little bit of damage uh, to, to Squash, so we'll, we'll see if that's going to matter or not. Uh, and now the Toxode is coming in. Let's check out these economic upgrades. We've got Pickaxe. We've got uh, Hand Axe over here. And, and Squash has got uh, exactly the same with the Plow as well. And Hippocon's coming in for Chemo. Going to get a beautiful cut here onto Squash's units. But Curse is available. Uh, and Chemo's going to have to retreat. And we also see the Nemean Lion coming in. Honestly, probably just want to wait until you have your own Curse if you're already going Aphrodite here. Especially because there's all those Toxode that you can hit. Uh, with a beautiful curse, because curse is going to do more damage to the Toxodes than the Hippocon, because they have less HP. So you're going to you're going to get more kills. Uh, we do see the Nemean Lions coming out now for 
uh, for Chemo. Squash, not quite close to the next stage, though he is getting his third town center. Marky coming up, Curse comes down. Uh, Hippocon starting to fight. We do see the Hippolyta getting sniped first as the Nemean Lion coming in. Definitely want to get the Nemean Lion attacking the enemy Nemean Lion because he gets that bonus damage there. The uh, Toxodes in the back here are dealing tons of damage with those pigs just kind of blocking here. We see the, the Nemean Lion just about to clean up the other one as we're starting to see some Prodromus coming in. Uh, but Chemo's definitely got the advantage here on this fight he's going to attempt to make a retreat here but there's uh really nowhere for squash to go at this point so he's gonna to have to turn around and take this fight a little bit we do see a villager snipe here uh as the toxo is coming through that nemian line just needs to get in get that uh that roll here and try and uh get that damage done we'll see how that's going to go we've got these units moving in to the wooden wall the hippocon will be able to clean this up especially if the nemean lion can get here and get some of that damage done a very poor micro here from chemo on that <laughs> on that myth unit and uh, this toxo is getting a little bit of damage before all just getting chewed up there nice play from chemo now he's starting to get some heavy prodromas coming in for squash still no mythic age obviously because he went for the third town center instead of the mythic age and Kimo very short on the resources here to do anything. Is he starting trade route? No trade just yet. Doesn't really want to do that. And there's a ceasefire from Kimo as he's feeling a little bit oh, um, overwhelmed here as he's got a lot of wood in the bank. Probably too much wood in the bank. And we're starting to see Squash throwing some military academies nice and far forward here. Not exactly sure what this one's about if he wants to start making some uh, some hoplites on the front or something to deal with the Prodromus. It's a nice, smart play from Squash. Uh, but Chemo can probably just start spamming down buildings and just defend. Uh, there is a gold mine over here he can go to as well. Pull some of these villages off wood. Come over here. Bring these villages off gold. Come over onto the wood line. Feel safe and, and fine and dandy about that. Now Squash also able to get to the mythic age here and this is kind of what i was talking about because squash went for the earlier second town center he's got more total resources which means faster tech which means uh if you try and go one to one with your opponent town centers but go late you're just going to be laid up to those mythic ages we'll see if that's going to be enough of an advantage here for squash to take this game we have so many heavy prodromas here whereas chemo does not have kind of anything at all let me just see we've got uh, fortified town centers heavy cavalry coming in for chemo but it is a little bit delayed here so this is going to be a good start to the fight at the very least for uh for squash uh as he's just got the advantage in, in damage in hp and possibly even in a little bit of armor no he's got sacred charge as well which i don't think chemo has at all oh he does have sacred uh, both players have the sacred charge um but it's looking like squash is able to pretty comfortably clean up Kimo's army 109 population to 142 population really really nice play from squash here we're seeing squash gonna come in onto these villages here push off of the gold we've got more buildings coming in for squash he's just spammed out all of the military counties we haven't started training anything from them as he's comfortable just with the prodromus at this point we'll see how this is gonna go As the Prodromus fight happening yet again. Kimo is actually just getting completely destroyed here because he's having to trade and build more units instead of tech, and Squash is already tech. So even if Squash loses all of these units, he's not really going to care because he's Mythic Age now. He's got the armories coming up. He's got Forge of Olympus coming through, uh, and his, his armor is just going to be out of this world strong. He's going to be able to turn the fight onto this town center potentially, and he does already have these military academies in here, and he's just spreading these buildings out. does not care. Potentially going to just like garrison into these academies and pop out forcing uh maybe forcing uh chemo to pick them off but not actually forcing it but now we've got the raids coming over onto this corner here gonna be going after the gold mine we see chemo going through hephaestus here trying to catch back up in the tech that he was behind on uh but at this point uh not only is the earlier mythic age huge but also the plenty vault that comes with it uh, just gives you way more resources because it's like he's on 90 villages now instead of 80 and chemo is uh, only 79 as well but these hoplites are going to be coming out we also see um, a heavy infantry coming through as squash is ready to start this fight yet again squash is playing like out of this world in this game as we're seeing come over onto this gold mine here going to be looking to snipe some more of these villages here doing some really really nice damage 
but the heavy hoplites, so very strong. Copper, weapons, mail, shields, all coming out at the same time. Squash has got a lot of resources in the bank. His armory, or sorry, his economic upgrades, very, very good. Missing only flood control, which is getting, and carpenters, which he is also getting. Just absolutely insane macro game here from Squash. Kimo just about to be pushed off most of his gold mines. His uh, prod drummers chasing around everything and there's a fortress coming up in the middle of the map as i said he's going to switch the battle here onto this ford town center with heliopolis with all of the armory advantage that he's got and the hoplites over here while they're trying to face uh face off against some house bears, because they've got so much upgrades here it doesn't even matter and they do have the advantage in numbers as well uh and there's a just a cheeky villager here that could potentially throw up uh a palace or, or sorry a hill uh, a fortress here we do see the uh forge of olympus should be coming through for chemo still no plenty vault as he's looking where for somewhere to put it there's really nowhere good for him to put it at this point <laughs> he's like where do you chuck it here maybe i don't know here here probably here but there's just i don't know we have the colossus coming out and the fortresses here, the Heliopolis coming through, iron weapons coming through, the last tier of the armor upgrades for uh, for uh, Greek when you have Forge of Olympus. It's still kind of expensive to get when you're spamming out units. So we see them coming like sort of trickling through as he can afford them. Uh, but his units are extremely strong. And Polyphemus plus Heliopolis. This unit is an absolute machine here as it completely... I think it's stronger than a Colossus in terms of... How much damage it does to a building so uh it's just so very very strong now the heliopolis coming off the chemo's forward town center he doesn't have masons doesn't have architects but masons is on the way for chemo as he's going to attempt to hold on to this location the units coming in for chemo he's got those prodromus he's got the he's got the hippocon he's got everything but there's already hoplites here as the heliopolis are going to be just chewing through this fortified town center with the help of polyphemus once this town center goes down there is a ceasefire for Squash, uh, and he can just move villages in and take that one for himself here. And if he goes up four tower centers with the armor upgrade advantage, there is just next to nothing that Kimo can do to come back in this game. Though Squash is a little bit short on wood, though he's spending all that on the fortress here. We see a, a random Colossus over here as Polyphemus does go down. Uh, do we see any cheekiness over here? No, still no fortress. And there's also a dock uh, siege possibility here that Squash can use later in the game if he feels like he needs it. One of the few marshes I've seen where water is actually in range of a town center. Or settlement, I should say. We've also got military buildings coming up in this location. Squash, no divine blood, but he managed to get one military academy up. And Kimo does end up tapping out there. GG, well played by Squash here. He's an incredible macro player here. And, and this is all macro and all defense. And Kimo tried to make it work, but there is something a little bit counterintuitive about going one town center, making a lot of Hippocon, making a lot of army. And this goes for kind of any civilization. Um, if you go up to like 100, 115 pop and then get town centers... There, there is something a little bit counterintuitive about it because you could just go Mythic Age and, and get a lot more value out of that. Uh, by the time you get there, you could either get Plenty Vault, which will give you 10 more villages that you otherwise would have got anyways from the town centers, and or you can go Earthquake and get Chimera and get a lot of damage done. Uh, and this goes for kind of everyone except for Atlantean, which is kind of in its own little class over here. But even with Atlantean, like if you get those town centers earlier, because normally what happens with Atlantean is you go a couple of units, like six to 10 units or something like that, and your opponent goes two town centers. The answer to that is generally cut units and go three town centers. Uh, and if you get it early enough, it's really, really strong. Um, but if you go like full 115 pop, uh, Oftentimes, you just fall behind on the tech and it doesn't quite work. Uh, and, and that's sort of what happened here in this game. So, he might actually played it really well up until the decision to get the town centers, in my, in my opinion. And I really would have liked to have seen it, uh, what would have happened, especially on a map like Marsh with all the hunt. That's another very big caveat there. If there's all the hunt, the fast mythics or semi-fast mythics are so much stronger. But I really would have liked to see what would have happened if he did go for that... Um, 
that strategy where he goes, we go heroic edge, you go mythic edge, uh, and puts uh, tons of pressure onto your opponent. But alas, did not happen in this game, and Squash does get the victory here. So GG, we'll move on to the next game. We do have two games that they played, so we'll see uh, what happens in that one. If you guys enjoyed these games, or this game, please consider hitting the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next game.